this is what we want to have this nice saddle looks very much original the only thing is it doesn't have much brown on it so uh, it is a leather saddle but it needs some overhaul and this is what we're going to do today we're going to try this out i'm going to make a half side with cocos wax and the other side with this got to be so you're going to clean it first it smells like gummy bears <laughs> so this is a clear winner in my opinion which is the cocos hair wax What's up guys, welcome to a new video. Today we have a little project on our hands which involves this old leather saddle. It's seen better days. It's probably 30 or 40 years old. We have put this off of a Raleigh bicycle, the Raleigh Rapide, which is still in the shed and uh, still needs to be restored. But uh, I figured, okay, I want to use this saddle for my own bikes. Hopefully you can see that as <laughs> the lighting conditions here is just awful in my apartment. But yeah, the plan is, to do this, to replace this ugly plastic saddle with a nice leather saddle. But uh, yeah, even though it still looks kind of cool the way uh, this is, um, I still want to give it uh, some, some fresh color because it has some, some rough spots, which you're gonna see in a second. This is the saddle which you put off from the Raleigh. It's a nice leather saddle, but uh, yeah, it has seen some rough time, it has some rough spots. So uh, I wanna give it some, some new color, some new life. With this it shouldn't be too difficult to clean it then paint it so I ordered this cups super color professional something <laughs> so uh, you can dye leather with it mostly shoes but hope it's also working with this leather saddle here pick the color which should be nice it's a, a dark brown even though <laughs> here it doesn't really look like dark brown but uh, we'll see. Um, apparently it takes 48 hours to dry. I'm gonna have another sip of my nice matcha green tea vanilla and uh, then we're gonna get cracking. Apparently the steps should be quite easy. First you have the preparer. So um, you pour this over some cloth or over this little thing here and then uh, just apply it. And then the second step is mixing the color and putting these brushes here onto this one and then going all over it. Then you have to wait 48 hours. So yeah, let's get cracking. I will catch you later. Now that was easy, wasn't it? So the first coat is on and it's on quite thick, I would say. So we're gonna let this dry now. Then maybe in a couple days, we're gonna make another coat over it. But for now, it looks pretty good already. Yeah, we'll see how it turns out, but I think it will look pretty good. So yeah, I will see you in a couple days, how it turned out and if we have to do another coat or not. All right. I hope you can see me. If not, it's not a problem. So first step, you saw that already, which was uh, dyeing the leather saddle with some color. Uh, we did that and then it turned out <laughs> really perfect and I didn't want it to have a perfect look. So then I used tea cut. Normally you can use that uh, in the car industry for removing any scratches on your car, but you can also use that for your steel frame to get the color back when you have any scratches. It also bleaches. I don't know why, I don't know what's inside, but it bleaches as you can see the color which we put on there. We bleached it away. Just gonna do a little bit because I already like how it looks. You can see at first initially it looks uh, then much better. This is the second step with T-Cut. 
then I was looking for cannibal wax or beeswax, which we need for the third step. So cannibal wax or beeswax, we can use that to give it a nice shiny look and the wax will also protect the leather from uh, yeah, falling away. <laughs> so couldn't find it, but uh, yeah, I just went to a local store and I checked some waxes which normally use for your hair, if you have any. I don't have so many hair, but it's quite pricey, but I know why now. Because it says it has aqua ingredients, that's clear. And then Sarah Alba, which is beeswax, so perfect. And then it says Sarah Canoba, so Canoba wax, which is also perfect. Exactly what we're looking for. We're trying this now because I don't have any other things. And I want to get this video done. Okay. And also, I decided, okay, uh, we can also try this cocos hair wax, which also doesn't have too many ingredients, but it also has Sarah Alba, which is beeswax. So, yeah. We're going to try this out. I'm going to make a half side with cocos wax and the other side with this got to be. And then we have a nice comparison, hopefully. Or maybe not. We'll see. I'm going to clean this now with some alcohol and then we go to the third step. And there again, the got to be one. It has a nice parfum, I have to say that. It smells like gummy bears. <laughs> All right. It's a little bit shiny, but not too much. Now we're gonna go for this Coco's beeswax. Let's see what this thing can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, smells good, smells also like beeswax. And uh, it is a second ingredient, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So yeah, I'm hopeful that this product is even better. Okay, now we're gonna do the other side. Cocos and beeswax for the other side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's also nice and shiny, as you would expect it from wax. Maybe it's it's shining a bit more than the other product. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, but I can see a clear line now. So you can actually see the difference, can't you? I like it uh, that it's a bit more shiny for the cocos hair wax. So I would say one nil for for this product here. But of course, if you can, you should go for some real beeswax or canoba wax if you want a perfect, perfect look. But yeah, I want to get this video done. It's also a nice experiment as well to try around uh, with these hair products. If they can be used for other circumstances. Okay, I'm gonna let this sit now. This is a clear winner, in my opinion, which is the Cocos Hair Wax. Just looks a little shinier and also it feels smoother, I have to say. When I go over it with my hand, it feels quite smoother. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna smear the other side as well. So you're gonna clean it first. And here we are. So, the saddle is finished, one, two, three, done, I would say. And uh, yeah, I think the results speak for themselves. The saddle, when we took the saddle out of the shed, it didn't have any color on it whatsoever. So we first had to dye it with some color, or super color, from caps. And we used, uh, they have many different options in terms of color. We went for old leather, uh, which is yeah, quite, quite dark, much darker as you can see than the color in this thing here, so it darkens up a bit, which I'm pretty glad about because it matches perfectly with the leather handlebar tape. Uh, so pretty stoked about this. And uh, then uh, we used some tea cut. Why did we use that? Yeah, well, the color here did a really good job to dye this leather saddle into brown, but it was almost too perfect for me. I couldn't see any of the scratches anymore it had. And I wanted to have a saddle that looks used and uh, matches the bike. And I even once thought well, maybe I could paint the saddle in this nice sand beige color, uh, but they didn't have this color. So anyways, I like it the way it is. So I used this tea cut, which normally you use in the car industry to remove scratches. You can also use that on your steel frame as well. 
And here I used it because I knew that it had some bleaching capabilities. Use some bleaching if you want to scrap some of the paint off again, <laughs> even though it sounds contradictory. Just wanted to have this vintage used look. I liked it a lot. And then <laughs> we had to find some wax and I did some research. Beeswax is commonly used to restore and to protect leather over the years. And also canoba wax is also used. And uh, so in the end, we used the pro two products here, the got to be <laughs> and this hair cocos wax. And uh, yeah, in the end, I like this one better. It was a bit more shiny. And also when you go over this, the saddle is now nice and smooth. So uh, yeah, I like that. Make sure that if you don't want to go with the quite pricey canoe wax or beeswax, you can also use this, but make sure that there are not too many ingredients in there. Otherwise it might not work. I'm glad it did. And uh, yeah, I hope you liked this video. If you did, then please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel to see many more bicycle restoration and vintage bicycle content on this channel. So yeah, and the next video is gonna be a cracker, I'm gonna tell you, which is also involves this bicycle here, which you can see now it's in a pretty good state, but it wasn't until like a few weeks ago. So um, restoring this leather saddle was the first step to restore this bike. And there are uh, two more steps or three maybe we have to do. And this, all of the other three steps will come in the next video. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, tell me in the comment section down below if you also have restored some old leather and what's your tips and tricks I would really like to know. And uh, maybe there are some other people in the community which would like to know your tips as well. So yeah, we're almost at the 250 subscriber mark, which is absolutely insane. I just started in October, 2019. It's, and now we are one year and two months later and we are at 250, which is absolutely madness. Uh, in March, I think this year, we were still at 60 subscribers. So just went through the roof when I started with um, yeah, the bicycle content as well. So yeah, that's the future for this channel. And uh, yeah, I hope you like it. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will catch you for the next video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.